Welcome to Saving the Past. I am GD. Well, today is May 8th, 2020, and it is currently 5.10 a.m. Rocky Mountain Time. Uh, I got a lot of things to discuss here this morning, <clears throat> so let's just get on with it. Um, let's do the charts first, and then I've got a few other things I'll discuss with you. Um, I've got the silver chart up right now. Uh, silver and gold both made a little bit of a move up over the past couple of days. But we can see that we are still winding up with lower highs and higher lows right now. So I think, let's see, and I've got a couple of trend lines up here. I've got a 50-day moving average and a 200-day moving average. Silver finally yesterday broke above the 50-day moving average, and today it is continuing the pattern. Uh, I think what I'm seeing here is we're probably, <clears throat> I, th I think we're going to show a little exhaustion here pretty soon. Let's just go in here real quick and take a look at what the figures are right now. We are currently at 15.43. We opened at 1532. We had a high of 1556 and a low of 1521. We are still testing that 1550 level, and that's the level we're going to need to break above. Uh, on the 30th of April, we hit 1549 and it got turned back. And we've hit this level up in the 1540s to 1550 a number of times. So in order for this to keep on going up, we're going to need to close above the 1550 level. Uh, as I say, we hit a high today of 1556, so it has tested it, but it has pulled back off of it a little bit, being at 1543 right now. We're going to need a breakout above that 1550 and a close above it for this market to continue going up. My preference would be for one more pullback, if we can get it here, to still give time for the for the physical prices which have actually been starting to come down a little bit at some of the dealers uh, not a great deal yet but i think that's going to start winding down here pretty soon as silver and gold start coming back onto the market in a little um more robust way the market has not closed down completely. Uh, I've been reading reports from silver miners over this first quarter, and it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Some of them are showing that they've actually increased output over this period of time. Some of them have shown a little bit of a decrease, but in all cases, even with the close down, most of them have been showing they're staying pretty close to year-over-year -year production. So there is really only one reason that um, the physical prices got so high, and that is because the refiners and mint show s slowed down or closed down completely. Um, but let's go take a look at the gold chart here real quick, and then we will discuss a little bit something else. Oh, and by the way, on the, on the silver, I think I did mention, I think I did mention this, that uh, we are well below the 200-day moving average on the daily chart. We have finally just broken above the 50-day moving uh, average on that daily chart. Uh, if I go out to the weekly chart here, um, we are still well below on both the 50-day and 100-day moving average on that. Um, but let's go over and take a look at gold real quick, and then I'll discuss a few other things with you folks. Um, <clears throat> on the uh, gold chart here, uh, this morning we are currently at 1719 it's bouncing around, but it's somewhere as close to 1719. We opened at 17502. We hit as high as 172354 and a low of 171156. We've got the same pattern going on here where we've had um, lower highs and higher lows. When we start seeing patterns like this, um, we have to uh, figure that we're still in a trading range, but we are testing this upper limit here. We had a high of 
uh, I'm sorry, 17.22 on May 7th. We had a high of 17.2194 on April 30th. So we are testing that with a high of 17.2354 today. So we need to break out above this level here and have a close above it uh, for us to continue going upward with the price of gold. Uh, that's three tests there. So the way that this turns uh, today is going to give us a very good indication as to whether this market's going to start going up or pull back again. But again, we've got this pattern going here where we, if we pull back from this, we are going to stay within this trading range still. Uh, we are well above the 50-day and 200-day moving average, which is exactly what it showed last time I did the moving averages on charts. If we go out to the weekly, uh, we are way above both of those, which is a good indicator for gold. And gold is still showing that it is the metal of choice for most people. But let's go over a few other things here real quick. I want to discuss a few things about the economy. Uh, let's go in and take a look at a few things here. First of all, um, some of the refiners are starting to open back up again. Uh, South Africa's RAND refinery restarts sm smelting operations again. This is a headline here. I'm not going to go over the news stories. I'm not even going to put in links because it's not really that important. The fact is that um, South Africa has, uh, South Africa RAND has opened back up and two of the major Swiss refineries have opened back up. So this is going to start, and those are some of the major refiners of the world. So that's going to start putting more gold back into the market again here. Uh, but let's quickly move on because I want to cover a number of things here. Uh, this is the economic news calendar. I've shared this with you folks before. This is on marketwatch.com. Um, and it's as expected. We've had um, negative numbers still coming out. The unemployment, the initial jobless claims hit 3.17 million this past week. And um, that puts us over 33 million unemployed now. And I think that number is still going to show some increase here. And um, today we have the unemployment rate coming out. Uh, they're expecting the unemployment rate at this point to be 15.2%, which is the highest I believe it has been since the Great Depression. And they're expecting um, non-farm payrolls to drop by uh, 22.1 million excuse me. Um, so we still have a lot of damage going on in the economy right now. Um, some of the other news reports that I've read recently, and this is in the retail sector, which is expected to be hit the worst of all the sectors, but Neiman Marcus has filed for Chapter 11. Chapter 11 um, is a restructuring um, chapter. Uh, chapter 7 would be where they're going completely out of business. Uh, Lord & Taylor, which is almost a 200-year-old business, um, is closing 38 of their, their 38 stores, so they are going out of business. And I would tend to think a lot more retailers are going to start filing for either Chapter 11 or Chapter 7 over this next quarter because they just were struggling to begin with, especially when competing against on online stores. Um, so what's next going on here? We, we've discussed a few times um, about whether we were in deflation, inflation, um, and I think with oil prices the way they were, we were um, thinking that it, we were showing some deflationary levels in the uh, market. Uh, oil has rebounded almost 50% um, for the Brent crude prices. Uh, and, you know, the sad thing is, is we've seen this time and time again, when the price of a barrel of oil drops, 
it tends to take a long time for it to show up at the gas pump. But when the price rises, it tends to go up pretty quickly. So I tend to think those um, <clears throat> low prices we saw in the barrel, barrel of oil here over the past month is probably not going to reflect at the pump much more than it already has, and it'll start increasing. So that's a little bit inflationary. And I've noticed a few other things uh, recently uh, especially at the grocery store. I don't go out and do a lot of shopping. And of course, with this lockdown, I've tried to avoid going out and doing some shopping, but I've had to go out for a few things. Um, at the grocery store, I've noticed price increases lately. I don't know if any of you where you are, are starting to see that, but um, I order some products online several times a year, and one of them is shampoo and hair conditioner. Now, I realize that these are minor things, so um, the point is, is that when you're trying to determine inflation or deflation, you have to look at a large basket of items, but I have noticed that the shampoo and conditioner that I generally order online has gone up a big 40% this year. So that is a major inflationary um, price increase. Uh, I went out and had to buy some plumbing supplies th this week to do some repairs here at uh, my place. And, you know, I, I shop for plumbing supplies and other building supplies regularly. And the couple of simple things that I had to buy, I noticed, had price increases on them. So it looks like inflation is starting to try and take hold, but I tend to think because of the high unemployment rate that we have going right now, and so many people that are um, struggling to pay their bills right now, it's very possible that we're going to go into a period, however long that's going to be, but I tend to think we're going to go into a stagflation period here for a while before we go into an inflation period. And of course, stagflation, for those of you don't, that don't know, um, that is uh, uh, when you have persistent high inflation along with high unemployment and stagnant demand. And um, I think that stagnant demand is probably what we're going to wind up seeing here um, for a little while. And once people start getting back to work again, then we're probably going to see inflation come along. Um, I know with all the money that the government has been pumping out, they've been hoping to get those inflation numbers back up a little bit. I just fear that... Um, if they keep on pumping money out there, inflation may get out of control and they may not be able to get it back up to the levels they want. But in any case, whether we have deflation, stagflation, or inflation, if the dollar stays strong, this is where people are going to go. And unfortunately, there is this exuberance in the stock market that keeps it going up and I do not understand that risk appetite that people have right now. They believe that this is the safe place to be putting their money. I think we're going to see another leg down in that uh, stock market over this next quarter as new numbers start coming out and a lot of these businesses start showing that um, they had problems during this first and second quarter. So we may see another leg down on that, and at that particular point, that's when I think a lot more money is going to go into gold and silver. So my hope is, is we can get these physical prices down um, before that starts happening um, <clears throat> to give us at least one more chance to get back into those. Now, I want to keep you folks on board here with something I know some of you are buy and hold no matter what, and I've tried um, discussing with you how um, there's different stages that all these markets go through. Gold, silver, the stock market, bonds, all these go through stages. And um, 
it might be coming close to a good time to get into gold and silver if we can get those premiums down, but it is not a buy and hold for a lifetime because gold and silver, once they hit their peaks, could wind up dropping just as fast as they went up and it could stay in a low pattern for a number of years before the next opportunity. So you folks need to carefully pay attention to what the pricing is when this market does start going higher. And I've discussed some of the key points in silver um, through many of my videos in the past. And when I see the market starting to heat up again, I will recover those again. Um, but there are going to be points along the line where you're going to want to start considering selling at least some of your holdings in gold and silver. We're not there yet. Obviously, we have an uptrend to take care of first. But once we start getting to those higher levels, it'll be time for you to want to start considering selling off a portion of what you're holding. Okay, folks, I've discussed a few things in the economy, but I want to discuss one other thing with you folks today. Um, I, I had touched on the dollar, and that is going to be a key indicator you folks are going to want to keep an eye on. It's been hanging pretty close to that 100 level. Um, in order to get shake people out of wanting to use dollars as their security and get into gold and silver, we're going to need to see that dollar starting to drop. And um, I think we're going to need to see it get below 90 to, to shake that out and have people go in there. So that's a factor you're going to want to keep an eye on. But Okay, folks, I hope I gave you a few things to think about here. Um, for the near future, and um, I wish you all the best of luck. I uh, do think there's going to be some great opportunities here, whether it be in gold and silver or even in the stock market. Uh, there were many things I could have covered here today, but these are starting to get longer and longer, and I don't want to lose you folks over them. But um, I do hope that uh, I'm giving you some information here that can get you thinking about uh, the economy and how it relates to gold and silver. And hopefully all the decisions you make are going to be very profitable ones. Uh, next week I'm going to want to do a few package openings. I know you folks are not overly interested in currency, um, but I'm going to keep on doing some currency ones to, to see if I can get you folks interested in it because and coins as well. Um, but the point is, is that there's more out there in the world besides just gold and silver that can help um, make you uh, some kind of extra money in the future. And um, I, I got a few package openings I want to do with you, and I will do them next week at some point or the week after um, some pieces that I just recently picked up. Okay, folks, um, I I appreciate you sticking around and watching this, and I hope all is going well with all of you. And until next time, have a great day. This is GD. Take care.